welcome everybody. Welcome legal students and, and other people. We're going to hear from a lot of interesting people today. Equality and fairness are two fundamental elements of Australia's legal system, but I don't have to tell you that, Mansfield. You are a legal studies student. I'm sure that's lesson number one, equality and fairness. We all have the right to be treated equally before the law, but how does our justice system provide for the needs of vulnerable people? Vulnerable people, how do we say that? Vulnerable people. In this case, we're talking specifically about people with intellectual disabilities. That's our story today. Intellectual disability affects around 1% of the Australian population. It ranges from mild through to severe or profound levels of disability. And studies have shown that people with intellectual disabilities are overrepresented in our criminal justice system. For example, approximately 6,000 of the 320,000 charges heard in the Magistrates Court of Queensland each year involve people with intellectual disabilities. And those stats are amazing. These char charges might involve crimes such as theft, assault, property damage, and causing of public nuisance. Today we're going to talk about Andy. Andy's not a real person, hello ladies. Andy's not a real person, he's a person we've invented and he's committed a crime. I don't know if, if you've all been to one of these before and then we talk about all the way through the process from where the crime happens to when he meets his lawyers and he meets people in the legal system who most of us never get to meet, luckily. And, <laughs> no offence, but if you meet a lawyer, generally, it's an unhappy circumstance, <laughs> isn't it? Generally, generally. I mean, I'm not hanging out at the same bars you all are hanging out at, otherwise it'd be a fun time, but I, I don't want to run into you guys, to be honest. Today, we're talking about Andy, a young man with an intellectual disability who has been charged with stealing, and we're going to look at the types of challenges he faces in the criminal justice system because of his intellectual disability and discuss ways of overcoming these challenges. Here's our panel. The Honourable Dean Wells, MP. Where are you? There you are, my friend. How are you? Good, busy. Oh, just a tad. Yes, all right. Well, thank you so much for coming. You're the member for Marumba in the Queensland Government. You're representing the Deputy Premier and Attorney General, Paul Lucas MP. Where are they at? What's their caper? Um, uh, the the uh, Attorney General um, plays a role in the legal system, as well as being a member of Parliament and a member of the Cabinet. Mm. The Attorney General also plays a role in the legal system. And when he's playing a role in the legal system, he's supposed to be completely non-political. He's not capable of being governed by a Cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, he has to act with unfettered discretion. So um, that's the role of the Attorney General. And um, at the moment, that's Paul Lucas. I'm representing him today. Where is he? <laughs> uh, What's his caper now? What's his caper now? I think that he's at a ministerial meeting. Oh, right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Very good. His Honour, Judge Brendan Butler, AMSC. There you are. You and I did this gig last year. How are you? Good. Good. You look great. Okay. Um, you're the Chief Magistrate of the Brisbane Magistrates Court. So this is really all about your story. I'm sure lots of people give you advice. And we're going to give you more today. Are you looking forward to that? You haven't got a pen though, that's funny. Oh no, yes you do. <laughs> Is that where you're gonna write down our ideas? Yeah, good, 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 good. Write down our ideas. Professor Susan Hayes, AO. There you are, hello madam. Head of Behavioral Sciences in Medicine and Forensic Psychologist. You're our psychologist. Yes you are. Oh, you've got the stick, there you go. Don't be afraid to use the stick though. <laughs> okay, you're gonna talk us through um, I guess the perspective, from the perspective of a person with a disability? Yes, and I'm going to explain a bit about intellectual disability as well. Yes, what is that exactly? We'll get to that, but what is it and where does mental illness fit in and all of that kind of stuff? Very good, very good. Mr Kevin Cox AM, where are you Kev? There you are mate. You are Anti-Discrimination Commissioner for Queensland and a member of the Queensland Sentencing Advisory Council. God, that's hard. <laughs> You got a weird idea of fun, dude. <laughs> I gotta know ya, yeah, yeah, I think you would be an interesting fellow to know. Mr. Peter Delabaltus. Where are you, Pete? Oh, you're my old mate. Okay, Peter, you are a Criminal Law Services Director, Legal Aid Queensland. You're a duty lawyer. I just met Peter the other day, it's so interesting. If you like find yourself um, at the police station, this bloke comes in, you've never seen him before and he's never seen you before and he's your lawyer. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> God, good luck to both of us, Pete, to be honest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Professor Geraldine McKenzie, there you are, my darling. How are you? Dean of Law and Pro Vice Chancellor of Research at Bond Uni. The, you're the academic amongst us. 
I am, but I'm here in my capacity of Chair of the Queensland Sentencing Advisory Council, where I sit with Kevin. You and Kev? Great, okay. And you're always up his, his honour here to change sentencing, more sentencing, <laughs> less sentencing, longer, shorter. That's... Well, we don't like to tell them what to do. No, of course not. <laughs> no. Thank you. No. Uh, Mr Dan Toombs, Director of Queensland Criminal Justice Centre and member for Legal Aid, a member of Legal Aid Queensland's board. Geez, you're a youngie. Well, uh, I'm, 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 or are you a baby face? I think I'm baby face. You're a baby yeah, face. Yeah, well, yeah. it's all good either way, Dal. And, uh, and how long have you been at Legal Aid? Been on the board now for about four years, Gosh. I think. Yeah. Do you reckon you'll stay? I'd love to stay. It's a hard is, job. Well, no, but it's a tremendous organisation. Yeah, but aren't lawyers supposed to be out there just making heaps of money and not caring about uh, anyone? Well, the You're lawyers at Legal Aid aren't, and uh, no, they've <laughs> got justice at their heart, so uh, that's what I like. Good on you. Good on you. are doing it wrong, but good on you. <laughs> and Dr Geoffrey Chan, there you are, my friend. Chief, Practi sorry, Chief Practitioner Disability Department of Communities. What does that mean? Uh, basically, uh, my job is to um, I report to the Director General and to provide her with clinical advice on all matters relating to disability services, so planning, performance, strategy. Um, so you're the latest information? I'm the latest information from the clinical perspective. Yeah. And I also hold the role of a Director of Forensic Disability, a legislation that was recently passed okay. in Parliament. Uh, I'm kind of like your very, very caring end of the business. The very, very what? Caring end of the business. Did you say carry end? Carry, no, caring, oh. caring end of caring the business. Caring end. I thought you <laughs> no, said not carry end, carry end no, of the no. business. <laughs> and I was so into that. Uh, well, the carry end, cannily thing. Caring end. Ca yeah, OK. Yeah. But you can be the carry end too if ever you want. Just <laughs> let me know. Uh, maybe not today. No, maybe not today. I would like to see that moving forward, though, sir. OK, before we begin, uh, the toilets are out in the foyer, but you'll be so riveted, there's no way in the world you'll find time for a toilet break. Uh, there are two emergency exits at the right-hand side of the room, over there-ish. Um, please switch off your phones, because they are recording this for their website and all that. And, um, and all of you have got mobile phones. Have you got, you've probably got two. You haven't brought your phone with you? Good boy. All right. And yes, as I say, we are filming. Now, today, please, I need to welcome someone who's going to welcome all of us. Are you ready for that? Big, rousing round of legal applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Chief Justice. He probably doesn't get a lot of these in the courtroom. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Chief Justice Paul DeJersey, PDJ. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the Banco Court this afternoon. And in doing that, I congratulate Legal Aid Queensland for again showing the lead with this excellent initiative during Law Week. In doing so, um, I acknowledge the traditional Indigenous custodians of these lands, the Yagara and Turrbal peoples and their elders and descendants. I also particularly acknowledge the presence and participation of a number of people in addition to our valued panellists this afternoon, and they are Ms Rachel Hunter, the Chair of Legal Aid Queensland, Mr Anthony Riley, the CEO of Legal Aid, Mr Paul Davey, the Deputy CEO, Mr John Allen, the Public Defender, Magistrate Christine Roney, and Ms D Diane Pendergast, who completed her term as Adult Guardian but four days ago, and Mr. Paul Marshke, the Executive Director of the Magistrates Court within the uh, Magistrates Court branch within the department. I also warmly welcome students and teachers from Pine Rivers High School, Brisbane Bayside State College, Cooparoo Secondary College, Ipswich State High School, Mansfield State High School, Brisbane North Institute of TAFE, Prince of Peace Lutheran College, Bell State School. I knew where Bell was, by the way. <laughs> and, and, Shame on you, and, 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 and Griffith University. Representing such a, a vast proportion of the defendants and accused persons who come before magistrates and judges in the criminal courts in this state, Legal Aid Queensland is particularly well equipped to host an instructive and entertaining hypothetical of this ilk. I'm confident this year's will warrant that description. There are two additional points I'd like briefly to make. The first is that the work of the criminal courts remains the conspicuous focus of public interest in the legal process. Unfortunately, many members of the public lack any real appreciation of the detail of that process, 
hence the value of an exercise like this today. The second point I wish to make is our realisation as a community that the time-hallowed approaches of the criminal courts must flexibly accommodate new phenomena. For example, drug crime, uh, addressed in last year's hypothetical, where very often it is the addiction which should be the determinant of the court's response. Another challenge is the one to be addressed today. How does the system come to grips with the effect of intellectual disability on moral and legal culpability? I warmly welcome you all to the event. Uh, we judges greatly value your presence and we trust you will find the exercise, as I forecast, both instructing and entertaining. And that's a reliable forecast when we take account of two features in particular, the identity of our panellists and the moderating effect of our compare. <laughs> Back to Michelle. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice PDJ, Paul de Jersey. PDJ is his DJing name, if you ever want to see him around town. Okay, Andy is a 27-year-old guy who lives with his parents in Stafford Heights in Brisbane. Andy has an intellectual disability which can impact on his ability to make good judgments in different situations. His parents are his legal guardians, so he's 27, but his parents are still his legal guardians. Okay, for most of us that finishes when we're 18. Um, Yes, so Andy's parents are his legal guardians. They encourage Andy to be independent and undertake independent activities, uh, such as go to the movies or the shops by himself. On a recent shopping trip, Andy went into a news agency to look at the magazines. He saw a magazine he liked on aeroplanes. He put the magazine in his bag and he walked out of the news agency without paying for it. The news agent saw Andy steal the magazine and called the police. This isn't the first time Andy has been caught stealing. His criminal record shows three prior convictions for stealing small items, such as books and magazines. Susan, my friend, can you explain to the audience what an intellectual disability is and how Andy's intellectual disability might have contributed to his poor judgment and to the stealing of the magazine, please? Okay, if we think of intelligence in a spectrum of society, there are the Albert Einsteins up one end of the spectrum, Average IQ is 100. Why is it 100? It's just a nice, neat number to work around. And people with intellectual disabilities are at the lower end of the spectrum. And the actual definition of intellectual disability is significantly sub-average functioning in two important areas of life. First of all, cognitive reasoning, that is memory, ability to learn, um, ability to work out verbal and non-verbal problems. And secondly, deficits in adaptive behaviour and involves such things as independence, getting on a bus, taking care of yourself, remembering to have a shower, um, being able to do some simple cooking and, and so forth. And the other important area of the definition is that it arises prior to the age of 18. So unlike people who might get a, um, a a blow to the head or a motor vehicle accident later on, people with intellectual disabilities have been in that state of, of intellectual um, deficit from the time that they were younger than 18. They might have got it as a result of genetic um, abnormalities or perhaps as a result of uh, being hit on the head or a severe childhood illness. So the important thing is that um, there's these two areas in which they are having difficulty reasoning and getting along in day-to-day -day life. And getting along in day-to-day -day life sometimes involves acting impulsively and not being able to see the results of your, your actions. And this is the kind of thing that's probably happening here. But we also have to say very clearly, intellectual disability is different from mental illness. So from the perspective of the owner of the news agency though, this is just a young guy who's walked in and stolen a magazine. That's he doesn't right. know any of that stuff and he's certainly visually, there are no visual clues for him to, to know any of that background about Andy. Yes, and most people with intellectual disabilities, you can't eyeball them and no. say that person's got an intellectual disability. Yep.